Good afternoon, Havelians. Welcome to this webinar. We will be discussing management of curved canals, a simplified approach. By me, Dr. Sanket Shade. I am a practicing endodontist in the city of Mumbai since 2013. I have done my post graduation from Manipal College of Dental Sciences, Manipal, under the able guidance of Dr. Shashi Rashmi Acharya. In this uh, presentation, you will get insights into how to manage curved canals on daily basis in the most simplified and predictable manner. Let's get started. कभी कभी लगता है अपन ही खतरनाक है द बेस्ट वे टू प्रिवेंट इलनेस फ्रॉम कोरोना वायरस इज टू अवॉइड बींग एक्सपोज टू दिस वायरस आई स्टार्ट माई प्रेजेंटेशन विद दिस स्लाइड विच सेज सिंप्लिसिटी इज द अल्टीमेट सोफिस्टिकेशन ट्राई टू कीप योर प्रोसीजर्स एज सिंपल एज पॉसिबल वी आर डीलिंग विद कर्ड कनाल सो फर्स्ट लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज अ कर्ड कनाल with straight root or a straight canal is rather an exception than the normal because most of the uh, teeth have some degree of curvatures inherent there they are also called as dilacerations the tooth is considered to have a dilaceration towards mesial or distal direction if there is 90 degree angle or greater along the axis of the tooth or root now uh, this this refers to an angulation or a sharp bend or a curve in a root or a crown of a firm tooth or a deviation or a bend in a linear relationship of a crown of a tooth to its root so this is basically a definition of curved canals in short they are always there but uh, when you take a radiograph you just see a 2d image you don't see a 3d image hence it is mandatory that you take two to three well angulated radiographs uh, to judge the severity of the curvature the most important assessment is the pre operative assessment radiographic assessment is obligatory when treating a curved canal i always give advice to all my students is to look at the radiograph for at least 3 minutes from coronal to apical end this gives you a lot of information you should try and create a mental image of the curve that you are going to expect in your mind which you're going to uh, do clinically take a print of a radiograph measure the canal curvature look out for pulp stones hindrances in the chamber and coronal tooth hole restrain the most important word in the management of curved canals do not force any file be it hand file or a rotary file do no harm if you can't manage simply call or refer to a specialist take three well angulated radiographs which should include one straight on one mesial and one distal now there are many ways to determine the angle of curvature the two most common commonly used is a nidus method and another one is wien's method first let's look at the nidus method in nidus method a line is drawn as you can see on the image uh, the a is a line which is the straight part of the canal and c is a part of the line which is a curved part of the canal where they in, in, intersect and the angle is measured and that angle is called as a nidus med it's one of the most simplest while in wien's the both a and b remains the same it's just that you drop a perpendicular from line a and b and when they intersect is what is called as a degree of curvature now there are many classification of curvatures i will not go into the detail but the most important uh, piece of literature which i would like to share is this when the angle of curvature is severe that is more than 20 degrees the chances of ledge formation is almost 52.3% so you got to be very careful if the angle is more so in all take a print out try to measure the angles and formulate a plan just like you plan a dental implant that way not just open a tooth plan an endodontic therapy read the radiograph there are many clinics in india which do not take radiographs and they feel uh, it's just not required and they end up uh, doing underperforming my first rule of thumb is you need to take well angulated three radiographs to assess the degree of curvature now the most important uh, aspect which is axis opening we will be covering it now you must remember that in dealing with 
the curved canals you need to remove these triangles of dentin these triangles of dentin hinder the subsequent rotary files to enter into the canal you should not make conservative access preparations when dealing with curved canals we need absolutely straight line access these triangles have to be moved away from the furcation area towards the axial area and try to achieve a straight line access i'll share some of my straight line accesses with you have a look at these this is straight there is no conservation over here here also it's straight this is central incisor many times you find a middle mesial in this particular part of the tooth here also this is a straight line axis this is an mb2 what instrument you should use to remove the triangles of dentin you can use any orifice opener of your choice my choice is edge taper platinum is because it has one of the highest cyclic fatigue resistance and it it's very difficult to separate so he is going to be our friend for demonstration of curved root canals uh now as i said pre operative assessment is important you can have a look at this radiograph i can see multiple stones over here there is a curvature which is a gradual and there is one more curvature over here so it's basically an s shape curve more of a nest towards an apical end now let's have a look at the video So this is what I use for my day-to-day -day endodontics. The first bur, as you can see in this, is a surgical length carbide bur. Surgical length carbide bur helps you in a better visualization. That is, uh, your handpiece never gets obstructed, and you have clear vision of where exactly you are pulling. In the posteriors, upper sevens, you can use normal. So uh, normal length carbide burs, and the third bur that I use, it's not a bur. I would say it's a diamond with a round end, and this is an endo axis bur. These two are from Neo burs, which is from Microcopy, and this is also a Neo diamond from Microcopy. Now the advantage of these, you should bend construction. These both burs are single piece construction, so they don't break at the neck, and that. that is a that is how you can prolong the life of these bones now why i use carbides more is there's a reason be a uh, uh, reason behind it carbide cuts diamond abrades i would like to cut fast and i would like to uh, penetrate and the feeling of drop that you get in a pulp chamber is always always with a carbide bur you you will i mean i i do understand you get with diamond bur but with carbide it's much more pronounced So these are my three main burs that I use for all practically all access openings. Here the size is uh, number four. This is two, number four, and this is basic endo access uh, diamond bur. Okay. As you can see, this is a surgical lens carbide bur, and we are utilizing this to do the access opening. Gives you more vision. You exactly know where you are drilling. second bur this is an endo access bur which is going to drop and it will get in the area and so in a minute time you can see the access to the bur in a minute time
all right let's move to working length considerations this is very important because you should know where your end point is so for simplified guidelines based on a lot of literature on apex locators we have come to a conclusion that always take the length till 00 on an apex locator and set your rotary files 0.5 mm less than the length what you get at 00 on apex locator use hand files in between your rotaries till 00 that way you can maintain the patency but do not use the mark 05 or just the first line or second line on the green zone because you need to clean right till the end here's a pictorial representation of how your end of the root canal looks as you can see cdj is an area it's not just a point so if you by mistake say choose arbitrarily green first line in green zone or a second or third line on a green zone you could be anywhere and thereby not clean in this area my idea of shaping is go right till here and then deduct 0.5 mm so you could clean most of the root canal and not have collagen blockage if you try and work short this is what happens this part of the canal never gets cleaned the glide part considerations are the as follows always try and use a curved file curved file is an intelligent file you can have two types of bend one is a sharp bend and one is a gradual bend how to bend you can bend a 10k file using a bird beak ortho plier what motions can be used minimal watch winding especially in curved canals you can use a balance force motion and the most useful is the anti curvature filing that is filing the outer wall only up and down motion there is no motion uh, of watch winding in anti curvature this only up and down motion Now let's have a look at the videos. You can see over here there is minimal watch winding. When eight number goes, most likely the ten number would also go, but the fifteen number would resist going. So when your eight goes, your ten usually goes to length. See, this is the watch winding motion. You can have a look at it. we will have a look at one more video which is of uh, the balance force motion and i'll show you right away you can have a look at over here see the eight number goes minimal watch winding eight number goes right till the end we measure it on the ruler it's around 11 21.5 so usually when eight number goes the 10 number also goes because the jump is only 20%. Now you see what happens with the 15 number 5. Let's see what happens when you put a 15 number 5. It doesn't go it it just resists after 10. So what you should do is take a 20 number 5 and take clockwise 90 degrees clockwise 90 degrees and take clockwise 360 degrees and two to three motions you do pull it out and then come back and put your 15 number though i do not advise you to put 15 number file back you will get 10 super smooth and then you can shift to your uh whatever glide path instrument that you wish to you must remember in balance force technique the file is rotated 90 degrees clockwise without pressure which is an engaging just the engaging stroke then it is rotated anti clockwise 270 degrees to 360 degrees with severe apical force which is called as a shearing stroke and you have to repeat this motion 90 360 90 360 90 clockwise 360 anti clockwise 3 to 4 times and just take it out and introduce your 10 number file back achieve patency get super smooth glide path and then jump to your whatever rotary file glide path files you wish to in a curved canal you can do that let's move to the next part of the presentation now 
if you try and force a file now this is what happens when 10 goes and the 15 number doesn't go and it leads to a lot of frustration and you try and push a file and which is the most disastrous in cases of code canal so avoid doing that try giving a sharp bend to the file uh, uh, at the tip last three millimeters so that this does not happen be careful of transportation don't be in a hurry take your time in anti curvature filing as you can see you curve you you try to file only this particular surface of the tooth you do not use uh, you do not try to instrument this wall of the tooth you only try and instrument this surface of the tooth so the most important technique in management of curved canal is a zone technique wherein you divide first prepare the coronal zone coronal one third middle one third and then you take care of the apical one third basically a crown down technique which rotary files to be used any files which are heat treated now previous generation of files were austenitic like the previous generation of pro taper or hero shaper uh, the steel colored which was stiff with shape memory and which led to a lot of loss of dentine and also the procedural errors like fracture of the instrument as they lacked resistance to the cyclic fatigue in curved canals always try and use more martensite files files with heat treatment process eliminating shape memory and improving the flexibility we are doctors we are not carpenters do not try and force a rotary file like this what rotary files to be used my personal preference is edge file from edge endo uh, is there are reasons you can uh, there is enough amount of literature and these files have one of the highest cyclic fatigue rate and uh, i would just worry free use them in any curved canal words of wisdom for all of you files will follow glide path proper access and glide path leads to less stress on a rotary file this is an edge file it's from the company called edge endo it has unmatched flexibility incredible strength there's no bounce back there's no transportation and it's compatible now it has one of the highest cyclic fatigue rate and as you can see the figures over here it's almost 700 cycles to failure so it's very difficult to separate these files and i don't claim this but there are enough amount a number of research papers on these files that they are extremely flexible and with the good cutting efficiency to manage any curved canal now let's look at what is torsional fatigue torsional fatigue is when the tip of the file binds in the canal which is smaller than the size of the instrument and the upper portion continues to rotate and what happens boom fracture let's have a look at the video this is very common with the austenitic files without any heat treatment and should be avoided especially in the curved canals so let's have a look at the video as you can see in this particular video the file just goes in and the upper portion continues to rotate and you have a boom break it let's try and understand what is cyclic fatigue every file comes with a fixed number of rotation it can withstand before it fractures it is this is what we call it as ncf number of cycles to fracture and this is called as cyclic fatigue kindly have a look at the video which is 1704 and it's going to be mounted on x mark hand piece okay and this i would rotate in this slot at 90 degrees for you can see for yourself how long does it rotate before it fractures so there we are we're starting it i just hold the block nicely so that you can see you can see this the file is at 90 degrees okay and there we start just count till the time this fractures these files at present have the longest cyclic fatigue resistance thereby you will be able to negotiate a curve without any risk of separation
have a look this is at 90 degree i am applying pressure also everything i am doing to break the file this is right at the 90 degrees Finally, it broke. Almost more than a minute. Now, clinical. As you saw in the video, it took a huge amount of time for file to get fractured. So you must use. I, I am not promoting any particular file, but what I want you to understand is use a file which has a high cyclic fatigue resistance. Use any heat treated file which you trust, which has a research, and use them in the curved canal. Now let's look at the glide path considerations. After getting ten numbers super smooth, use a seventeen o four, or after doing a balance force technique with twenty k file flex r file, you can use seventeen o four directly. This file has a maximum fluid diameter of one millimeter, hence it will be very useful, and uh, it has to be used. Uh, at the speed of 300 to 350 rpm and since it has mfd of 1 mm it preserves more dentin as opposed to other rotaries which are made on 1.2 mm wire the technique is simple the x7 series is what i use most frequently now there has always been a controversy which i will uh, address whether to go for 4% or 6% Now, when you have a severe resistance to the ten number file, which in cases of an old patient or a highly calcified canals, uh, you can choose to finish the preparation at four percent. Otherwise, if there is minimal resistance to ten number, try and give a six percent taper to the canal. As the more you give a taper, six percent or thirty six percent, not the eight percent or nine percent. but this would give us a deep shape and where you should be able to clean better instrument better and fill better now i am able to do 25 6% 36% even in the curved canals now this is mainly due to the cyclic fatigue resistance of these files and you don't have to worry about fracture or the instrumentation now let's look at the complete shaping video for how to use these particular file please do not perform ninja access unless you have do not have a microscope and i would refrain especially in curved canal management like this never do an ninja access it should be straight line you should be able to see all the orifices in one go now i would not introduce a k file at this moment uh into the uh, pulp chamber the first thing that i would put would be rc help should be able to see all the orifices in one go now i would not introduce a k file at this moment uh into the uh, pulp chamber the first thing that i would put would be rc help teaching now what happens is all the canal orifices are obscured and that's why when what i mentioned in my previous slides the mental imaging of the canals is the most important thing as you can as you can see now this is completely flooded with rc help now what is the purpose of introducing this is it causes emulsification of pulp so once the pulp emulsifies there is very less tendency of pulp to get pushed in the apical direction everything comes up this is going to be our first friend this is edge taper platinum sx this will open the orifice and then i would introduce a 10 number key let's get started the speed would be 350 rpm and 3.5 torque now at this point of time i am just imagining the position of mesiolingual canal and the mesiobuccal canal and okay 
from the fertile embryo. Brush away. In mesial systems, just imagine as if you are just touching the mesial surface. Don't push the file. Brush. Brush. Brushing is the only motion to be done in this particular case. Now we are irrigating after the orifice opening. Both the canal orifices have been opened up. As you can see in this video, it's nicely opened up. And now is the time to introduce a 10 number K file. Alright, I'll start with the 8 number file. You can give two types of bends. This is a gradual bend or if there is an apical hook in the file, what you can do it with the tweezer, you can give a sharp bend over here. You can do that as well. There is no problem. Okay, give a sharp bend like this. So it depends on the degree of curvature. I'll give you. I'll give this tooth a nice. Uh, I'll give this file a, a nice curve, gradual curve, and then we would introduce. The key motion, I'm starting with the 8 number and then we'll shift to the 10. Here we would do minimal watch winding. That's the key. I would flood the canal with a brim full of sodium hypochlorite. And as you can see, this bubbling already started. And then I'll introduce this particular file. As you can see, in curved canal management, do very minimal watch winding motion. You should do majority of the time push and pull push and pull don't do anything else just do push and pull this is minimum this is the motion that you're gonna use in curved canal try and go minimal watch winding just engage disengage push and pull push and pull go a little further push and pull push and pull this is anti curvature filing as if you're just just brushing on the mesial surface of this particular root push and pull minimal watch winding not aggressive push and pull as you can see see over here it's it's pretty curved it's sharp at the end as well over here as well same stuff push and pull you can coat the file slightly with EDTA as well. Push and pull. No vigorous watch winding. Just up and down, up and down, up and down. This is 10 number file. Now we'll introduce 10 number file. I've given it a gradual curve. This is the most important. You see here, I'm not doing too much of watch winding. It's more of push and pull push and pull once you get to the length since this is a extracted tooth we'll verify it with the radiograph and the same goes with the mesiobuccal canal give it a gradual curve just replicate the curve that's there already in the push and pull push and pull do not do not do too much of watch winding as it leads to more procedural errors and just try to brush on the mesial surface try to get this 10 number ultra smooth or super smooth this is c pilot this is my favorite you can use any k file of your choice nothing no hard and fast We'll verify with the radiograph as to where it is reaching till. Since uh, the root is fused, we just need to verify once. So the next sequence in the instrumentation would be this X7 series. This has been my favorite. There's a reason to it. It has one of the longest cyclic fatigue resistance, so it is especially useful in curved canal cases. So the first file that I'll pick up is 1704. 1704 is one of the most robust files in of this particular system. 
and this we would attach to the handpiece. This is white with two rings and I'll measure it. The length of the tooth is 19 mm. So we'll set it up at 19. This is 19. That's it. So this is 1704. This is set at 300 RPM and 3 torque. You can use the torque 3 to 3.5. This files can endure higher torque and should be used. That's the company's recommendation. You can see I'm brushing. You see how easily this goes into the curved canal. Brush, brush, north, west, south, east. North, south, east, west. Brush, brush towards the mesial surface. You can see the motion. The beauty of this file, you can curve this file like this. Introduce it in the canal like this and then start the handpiece yet nothing will happen to the file that's the beauty somebody who has little less mouth opening you can do this as well i'll do this with the mesiolingual as well these files can endure enormous amount of stress now you see this There has been slight opening of the flute. Now this is a safety feature of the file. It, it uh, unwinds instead of breakages. If you autoclave it, it will again rewind to some extent. But if too much of unwinding happens, then it should be discarded. Remember this thing in mind. You get some features, you lose some features. These files are extremely difficult to separate. But yes, a drawback would be slight unwinding but which would again recoil after autoclaving cycle. So this work of this particular file is done at present in both the canals. We will shift to the next file in the sequence. This is the next file in the sequence. This is 2004. Two rings and 20. This we will use. Now I will show you from the top this time. You can see this. Goes right in. And this is our reference point. See it goes so easily. So easily you just don't have to worry. Just keep inspecting the last flute, last few flutes of the file. Look for the debris. The next file in the sequence is 2504, that is 254 percent. These are all made on 1 mm wire and since they are made on 1 mm wire, they are extremely flexible and they are extremely suitable for these kind of curved canal cases. Brush, brush, see how it easily it goes. That's our reference point, 19 mm. That's our reference point. Again, 19 mm. Now you keep inspecting the flutes of the file. I see very minimal debris at, at this point. Hence, I would go to the next file, which is going to be 2506. The next file in the sequence is 2506. I'm a 6-person guy. There's a reason behind I never finish at 4-person unless the canals are extremely tight. Is You don't get to see the debris on the last 5 mm of the flutes. Unless you don't get that, I feel you have not cut the apical one third and hence you have not got the chance to clean right to the end. You can do 4% provided you provided you prepare higher. I am okay if you do 3504 or 3004 fair enough. But 2504 is way too less for uh, the preparation to end. So this is 2506 and I will put it in the you see this wobbling doesn't matter the moment you put it in the canal it all comes out fine you see the canal now it has come out straight so no issues
never force a file there we are you see the debris in last few flutes so here the preparation will be over with these files you can do 6% preparation even in curved canals that's the beauty of this particular system done now i will irrigate enormous amount of debris gets accumulated always recapitulate between every root tray file i have skipped the step not skipped in the sense real sense but for video making i have done after every rotary file use a 10 number go right till the working length and that would help All right, I'm sorry, I think my mic went bust. So yeah, this is what we got at the end of the uh, shaping procedure. You, you can see the maintenance of the curvature over here, double S shape. Now, what is the irrigation criteria in curved canals? Keep it as simple as possible. In, uh, uh, you can use uh, sonic, ultrasonic, whatever is of your choice, but uh, in curved canals prefer using manual dynamic agitation as it's cost effective wherein you take a gutta percha which is your master cone cut back by one millimeter introduce 17 percent edta one ml and do 100 strokes up and down in the canal and that way you get a clean canals you can use sonic as well you can use ultrasonic as well just be careful 
you might end up breaking the tips inside so uh, to keep it simple use manual dynamic agitation in curved canals and other routine cases you can use whatever you choose ultrasonic has more research as compared to the sonic now how to tackle conflicting issues with any heat treated files in era of heat treated files the there is an issue wherein your cone does not fit so for all practical purposes for 4% use fine medium cones and for 6% use any medium cones use a gatta pacha gauge so if, for example you have prepared 25 6% put a medium cone in 25 and jut and cut the whatever is coming out excess from behind and that will be a perfect cone fitting uh, with any heat treated files now let's have a look at the video of the same as we all know there are multiple devices on the market syringe irrigation would also work but in curved canals it's difficult so my suggestion is whatever master cone that you used you used a technique called as manual dynamic agitation wherein you insert the cone to your working length and do these strokes at least 100 strokes per minute per canal with an amplitude of 1 millimeter you can do this this is relatively easier and this creates a hydrodynamic effect inside the root canal space and you'll be able to disinfect very very well this is one of the very nice methods most economical I do understand your next question and concern would be periapical extrusion unless you have violated the apical constriction to the level that anything even your syringe irrigation would express out this would not cause damage to the periodontium that much you can use this it's documented study there are n number of studies on this particular method you can use this for disinfection use liquidity ta for a minute and then disinfect with sodium hypochlorite full 5 percent strength from succamide that's what i use in my daily day-to-day -day practice for my most of the obturation this is medium from diadent m and you can see it over here i've taken that uh, cone cone fitting should always be done in a wet environment to reduce the friction and you can see here I'm inserting gently I'll introduce another cone as well in the system yeah and you can see here they are joining and that will be verified by the radiograph so here we are done with our preparation next step would be disinfect all right so i hope you enjoyed the videos there has been a lot of controversy as to how much you should prep now on a scale of x and y axis it's understood and it's by uh, you can say logic that as the apical prep size is increasing your your degree of curvature I mean as the degree of curvature increases your apical prep site should decrease so if you have extremely curved canal try and have an apical preparation size of 3004 or 3504 or 2506 not more than that now what is the finishing criteria in curved canal whether you should prepare 4% or 6% I'll simplify in a very logical manner just observe the last 5 millimeter of rotary file every time you hit the working length and the moment you see the debris in last 5 mm of flute the preparation stands complete we call this as visual gauging in endodontics have a look at this picture this last 5 mm the moment the rotary files are covered with this debris your shaping is complete i do understand you cannot touch all surface of the root canal with the rotary file because the canals are never round they are oval ribbon shape keyhole shape so this is what I follow in my practice and I think this works wonderfully because you get both the balance of instrumenting as well as cleaning the apical method. Teeth to watch out for maxillary lateral incisor they have a sharp curvature distilling 
and the palatal canal which has a sharp curvature buccally so always bend a file when sharp but give a sharp bend to a file when you're dealing with these kind of uh, teeth and these canals now let's have a look at my some of my cases uh, we are always learning day by day so this is the case number one it had a sudden severe sharp apical curve the difficulty level was moderate degree of curvature about 45 degrees and this is how we finished we could negotiate the entire curve in fact we had a crisscross curve over here the strategy remained the same orifice opening followed by 10 number file super smooth 1704 glide path and 2506 finish with non-standardized GP cone medium and I have used pulp canal sealer here EWT you can use H plus or bio ceramic whatever is your choice case number two C uh, here there's a sharp bend at the apical one third it's called as a hook 40 degrees almost and this is how we ended up treating the case this looked pretty straight but it is not straight have a look at the radiograph there is a lot of calcification in the pulp chamber this you will never get a drop in such cases uh, I had to start with 8 number and unexpected curvature in the mesial system have a look at this and there is a lateral canal which was filled over here this is a moderate curve always follow slob rule that is same lingual opposite buckle take well inculated 3 radiographs to ascertain how much curvature and the anatomy of root canal system this is how we finished here the two canals will join into one and over here you can see a gradual curve this is an interesting case he was the sales rep from one of the dental company of course i cannot name him but yeah so the stakes were very high and yeah I had to do a good job for him and this is how we finished beautiful results same protocol sx 1704 2004 2504 2506 four files or three files is all you need to finish the case extremely tight lower seven i took more than one hour for this particular case one and one and a half hour maybe uh, middle third curve extremely prone to ledges and blocks and this is how we got the result using a simple standard protocol sharp apical curve both mesial and distal almost 80 degrees sharp bend and this is what we got here the important is to get 10 number super smooth once you get that these files follow very easily lower 8 extremely difficult curved canal case if this would have been in my clinic I would have extracted but the the consulting doctor I mean the referring doctor wanted me to uh, just do it and uh, save the tooth I said okay we'll do that this was refused by three other dentists and this was one of the most difficult case I have treated double curvature upper seven and and there's a huge pulp stone over here and this is how we finished look at the curvature look at this same sequence sx 1704 2004 2504 2506 non-standardized medium cone and pulp canal sealer ewt this is uh, again saying namaste both mesial and distal canal saying namaste this is case number 11 that I would like to share again a difficult case upper 7 with curves in both mesial and mesobuckle canal and distobuckle canal now have a look at this case look at the maintenance of the curve and why the importance of apex locator the radiographic apex is over here probably but the canal is ending over here Hence, it is important to trust your apex locator when it's 0, 0, it is over here, right at, right at the exit of the canal onto the PDL. Look at this. This is the radiographic terminus, not the radiographic apex. This is the radiographic apex. So you must understand and please compulsory use an apex locator please without that it's not possible to do endodontic therapy 
one more interesting case this was done during my post graduation days i did not have access to these files uh, th th those times i had access to hyflex and uh, there were the only heat treated files there so i will look at this uh, third root double curvature s shape look at this this just prepped till 2004 a brand new file nothing it was extremely extremely difficult case and to sum up this is one more case restorative prognosis poor well, since i was told to do endo i just did it and I referred back and you can negotiate almost any curves if you follow the proper protocol so i would like to thank you all for patient listening and watching during the most stressful times of humanity i hope we all will come together and conquer the coronavirus and resume our normal lives.